So let's talk about something called supply chain management because we need a real comprehensive integrated approach so that we, that we can kind of connect all the different players involved because you could have a lot of different touch points between literally the raw material that goes behind a product all the way to the customer. So, for example, you might have producers or manufacturers involved. You may have vendors and suppliers who get it from the actual manufacturer. They furnish it to a, maybe a distribution company. The distribution companies get the product to the retailers, and the retailers get it to the customer. Or maybe the producers go to the distribution company. There is no vendor involved, and maybe there's a raw material supplier involved in here and also between each of these transfer points you've got maybe a shipping company maybe you have something manufactured in China let's say it's a toy or something or an electronics it's shipped so we have a shipping company that has a tanker shipper a cargo ship brings it into a distribution company in New York City gets it to the retailers and the retailers get it to the customer the point I'm trying to make in the point I'm making in all of this is that this is really kind of a, a mix of lots of different players. So what you're trying to do is identify and connect and get them all in sync, working together, so that we can compress and really reduce the time, the delivery, manage the quality and the cost. That's what a supply chain is trying to do. Is we're trying to optimize the flow. That the movement between all the different players who could be involved from raw materials all the way down to the customer and the customer may come back and return it to the retailer who returns it so this chain could get triggered from the customer even so it has a lot of dynamics is going on so we're trying to get an optimal flow of this movement so we can control cost and meet the demand according to how the customer wants it. So there's a lot of logistics involved in trying to schedule and connect everyone. So you have to optimize the flow, lower the cost, try to meet demand. It's demand driven. Then we have all the logistics, the movement, the shipment. They take shipment, they inspect it, they stock it, they get it to the retailer. A lot of logistics are involved in the movement of physical, tangible inventory items. That's what we're talking about. And what we want to do is we want to drive this based on demand. We don't want to just keep supplying, supplying, supplying things and building up, building up. What's going to happen if you do that, your costs are going to go up, 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 up. So we're not going to lower cost unless it's demand driven. It has to be a demand driven. So we have to have forecasts that are demand driven in the supply chain to manage it correctly. So we have to optimize the flow to lower the cost. Logistics has to be involved to move things between all the different players. It has to be demand driven from forecast. What's your demand? What does the demand show? That's going to determine how much you should supply and move through the supply chain. And then on top of that, you have to superimpose quality standards to make sure it meets customer requirements. You have to meet delivery times, for example. We don't want to have a lot of damaged goods. We want to make sure it's right so the customer orders it, he gets it, he doesn't return it. So we, that's what the kind of quality we want to have. So the, once the customer gets it, it doesn't go back upstream in the supply chain. We want to minimize that. Otherwise, our costs are going to go way up. So keep in mind, we're trying to co control costs, control costs in the supply chain. And in order to do all this stuff, then you have to analyze and look at reports. And we want one system, one single point of truth. We don't want a supplier, a vendor, a retailer looking at three different systems with three different answers. Like Walmart has one online inventory management system that it looks at store by store by store. But all the vendors, all the vendors and suppliers are all tied into that single system so they know exactly what's on the shelf, what's selling, and when they need to replenish it. So they have a single point of truth within the supply chain, just like Walmart has. So these are some of the characteristics that we really have to deal with, the dynamics in managing this supply chain. Now, just so you'll know, there are some important components 
that you're going to have to be challenged with to make the supply chain work. We will talk in a later lesson about the importance of segmenting your inventory. Some inventory items sell and turn over rather rapidly. There's high demand for that. You want to have those items separated out from maybe the moderate, some things that turn over moderately versus a very slow moving inventory items. So you want to group and manage the inventory and segment it based on its movement, its demand. So we're going to break out our demand forecast into segments. So the demand forecast will be broken out into segments. We'll talk about segmentation in another lesson, but this is an important component in managing inventory within the supply chain. And then at the same time, we want a supply chain that's flexible because every customer may have a unique requirement. Maybe they want a blue shirt, but they want something on it that's a little different than the norm. Can we accommodate that customization? And if the supply chain can be flexible enough to meet specific requirements on a customer-by-customer by customer basis, this becomes real value added to uh, making sure the supply chain really meets and works for the customer. Again, now, it not only is it demand driven, but the demand driven comes from the customer and it comes from the customer requirements. If we're really meeting customer requirements, our demand should go up. So we have to deal with customization a lot of times in this world, which is very customer driven. We can use market analytics. We should have analytics to help us understand and predict what the demand is. For example, uh, Lowe's and Home Depot are retailers and they sell a lot of supplies to consumers like lumber, plywood, batteries, stuff you know that you can use around your house to kind of build around your house. Well what they do is they look at the weather forecast for storms, tornadoes, hurricanes and the reason they look at that weather information is because it predicts demand ahead of time. If you know a hurricane is going to hit the Gulf of Mexico, let's say Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, people in that area of the country are probably going to demand more batteries, more flashlights, more plywood to prepare for the hurricane. So what they're doing is they're using predictive analytics to forecast demand before it even happens. So if we can put this kind of component into our supply chain, it's going to help us really optimize and really help lower the cost and meet the demand the way we want to. So some form of predictive analytics should be a component of the supply chain management system. Differentiate the products. Again, this gets back to customization of customers. So if you can have products that are customer specific, that is going to help us meet the demand and the requirements of the customer to differentiate your products. You don't want homogeneous products that are the same regardless of where you uh, can buy them. We, if we can have something that's unique to the customer, that's going to really help us optimize and pull in the demand. And if we pull in more and more demand, what that will do is that will lower our cost. That's the reason we're focusing, the reason we're focusing so much on demand is because that higher volume is going to reduce our cost. So that's, the, that's what we're trying to do in the supply chain. And you have to think strategically about all the different players in the supply chain. For example, maybe the producers and manufacturers today are not necessarily the best producers and manufacturers five years from now. Uh, for example, maybe the best manufacturers are in China, but maybe five years from now it could be in Vietnam some completely different place. So one of the things you got to do is you got to plan and figure out how these players and this mix will change in the future. Maybe there's a new technology, there's trends happening. You have to kind of help figure that out by thinking strategically and planning way ahead. You don't want to be in a reactive mode in the supply chain. So you've got to look at and really analyze all the different players, even the customers, to think about strategic supply. How do we reposition the supply chain in the future so it continues to really optimize and work really well? And obviously, you know, every, every business is a technology company. 
So technology layers have to be built in so all the players can tap in to their touch points and there's visibility as to what's going on, including the customer. What are the customer ratings? Like if you're on Amazon.com, you can do a review of the service that you got from Amazon.com. For example, maybe you had to return the item because there was not a size chart, so I could, could not figure out the right size of shirt that I needed to order. So if we can build in that information and find out, we get that feedback loop to figure out, okay, let's optimize the supply chain better. Let's put a sizing chart in there that helps us reduce customer returns, which lowers our costs. So we want to really use the technology to build in the visibility that we want so we can optimize the supply chain. So this is a very important thing. And then obviously we want to measure things to manage things. So we want standards of quality, turnaround time, cycle time, delivery time. So there should be service level standards for all the different players involved. So the, so the retailer, the distributors, the suppliers, the vendors, the shippers, everybody should be held to some type of quality control standard, some type of metric that we hold them to, a service level standard, so that we can manage the supply chain. So some metrics are going to definitely be important, and we will build them into our service level agreements. That's SLA. Service level agreements will have these standards and metrics built in them, into them that all the players have to meet and we'll measure their performance against that. And a lot of times their compensation is based on meeting those standards and if they don't meet those standards we can deduct certain compensation from them. So that's, that's performance based metrics built into the service level agreements that are part of the supply chain. So these are some important components. This is a lot of stuff. I, this is kind of very complicated and I know I'm throwing a lot at you and there are a lot of books and courses that you can take but you need to understand how important the supply chain is to helping you manage the cost, pulling the demand in, connecting to all the players, managing the logistics, having technology in place, a single point of truth so everybody plays from the same system. So these are all important components with supply chain management.